How's it going, folks? This is Mason Goodnight here, doing a little video series again, kicking it off, I guess, a reboot, you might call it, called Reformed and Conforming, based on this website's name. Um, I put this together a few years ago, and I'm going to leave the old videos on. I'm going to put them down below there. I don't know uh, what I'm necessarily going to name each one of these, but I think I want to make a little more bite-sized, a little... Uh, smaller. I want to take, definitely keep them between five and ten minutes. I don't want to go long. Some of my other ones I believe were up in the 20 plus minute longer and I could, I ramble a lot, you guys know, so I, I want to try to keep that down. If you know me at all, you know I ramble. If you don't know me, well, I can. So uh, I want to try to avoid that too much. I just want to talk about what God has done in me and what this really means. What I mean to be, when I say I am reformed and I'm being, I'm conforming, I'm being conformed to the image of the Son. Right out of uh, Romans 8, 28. Um, that's kind of the key. So what I want to discuss in these things is that. In this first little short video, what I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about me. What what brings me to this point? When I made the first videos, I was still in a church that was not Reformed at all. I came to embrace the doctrines of grace at a time when I was in a, a definitely a non-Reformed church. I was non-Reformed until obviously embracing those truths. I am, just so you know right off the bat, I was not raised in a like Reformed Baptist church. I was not raised in a Presbyterian church, uh, even a Lutheran church or anything like that. I was raised in basically non-denominational, some Baptist churches um, here in America, and uh, I held to the uh, standard, which is still the standard, the overwhelming majority, um, free will, quote unquote, uh, Arminian viewpoint of uh, soteriology, of how to be saved. So I was a free will person, um, believed that, and Arminianism, as it, I didn't even know what it was called, um, like I said, I was in a I was in a Calvary Chapel. That was the church I was in. Um, I loved the church, but when I embraced those doctrines, it did cause quite a stir. Um, led to a lot of problems that uh, didn't get resolved until I found out after leaving for another doctrinal issue and going to a new church. I found out that uh, Calvinism was never really let go by some people that really had a problem with me embracing it because I was a I was a full on uh, Calvary Chapelite. If you were a Calvary Chapel guy and you no being dedicated to the church and what they had going on and what they do have going on. And to this day, I still love a lot about Calvary Chapel. I still love a lot that I got out of there. I still a lot of spiritual truth I gained. I really appreciated going through the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. I was there for over 15 years. I served in every capacity pretty much there was in that church. I started serving in children's ministry, doing parking lot duty, eventually was a deacon. Then I went on to become an elder. I helped with the junior high, the high school. I eventually became the college pastor. And then after that, I was even the skate church pastor. Um, like I said, I was, I was an elder until I left that church. So I, I'd served through all realms of the church pretty much other than senior pastor. Um, I, I've been, in, like I said, I was in there probably 15 years. So there was a lot of time there. And I'll tell you, I was, I never thought of myself as either an Arminian or a Calvinist. And I understand that most American evangelicals do not consider themselves either an, an, an Arminian or a Calvinist. They commonly will say, like I did, well, I'm neither. Okay. I had just, I was just, I'm just a Christian, you know, I don't, not either or. Well, uh, go ahead and look at my video I made on here that is neither, it doesn't necessarily fit on this, on this webpage, uh, Reform or Conform, but I'll put the link in for this one too, because I describe the dividing line, the uh, litmus test that you are, I just want you to know that right off the bat, you are on one side or the other. Whether you call yourself a Calvinist or Arminian, I understand that. Whether you call yourself, you want to narrow it down or make it more precise, you believe in um, divine sovereign grace or you believe in uh, libertarian free will, free will versus sovereignty, however you want to um, form the debate, you do stand on one side. You do not hold to both in the sense that you can or, or one is against the other. There's definitely a dividing line. I'll let you watch that video to see where you stand. It's very neutral. I've had people watch it and accuse me of being an Arminian, um, having watched it because I was very clear to make it neutral. I just want people to know they stand on one side or the other and to know that from the Bible. Anyway, so I came out of that, and I was virulently anti-Calvinist. Calvary Chapel will say they're neither. They're, the Calvary Chapel will often say, hey, we're neither Calvinist or Arminian. In fact, a, f a famous little booklet they've had for years, which I used to love, um, I used 
amazed by it when I was younger there at Calvary Chapel. It's called Calvinism, Arminianism, and the Word of God, written by Pastor Chuck Smith. It was a great little booklet back when I first read it, I thought, and I thought, wow, why is this big debate? Why are people arguing after the, about this over 500 years? I mean, Chuck's got it all nailed down pretty, pretty succinctly here. Yeah, pretty understandable, pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. You can just kind of walk right down the middle. I later wrote a critique of that, seeing as that it doesn't answer the question. It doesn't fit the bill. But let's say, I mean, I had people who I knew who were reformed at my work who would come at me and would talk about these things. I remember getting violently angry. And uh, people that know me know that I can, I can get a temper, I can get loud and obnoxious and energetic. And I would, I would, don't you tell me that there's no free will. Don't tell me that it's God's will, that there's sin, and blah, blah, blah. And I would get in there like, finally, oh, settle down, it's okay. And they just let it go because they knew I was just kind of irrational and intense and, um, I strongly believed in the free will position. Um, I used to preach Romans, no Romans 3, uh, 1 Peter 3, 9, or 2 Peter 3, 9. It was, my, it was my favorite verse. I used to preach it and call it the greatest love verse in the Bible without saying the word love. I've since made a video explaining where I didn't just plain read the text clearly um, and uh, see my error and my interpretation of the scripture. Now, I, I think I call it a... Uh, wrestling and God and wrestling or something like that. I'll put, maybe I'll put a link in this too so you can see that video if you want. Um, I made it quite a while ago. But all to say, I was very much anti-reform. I was a big proponent of free will. So I'm not coming at this from someone who's born and raised and bred and brought up a Calvinist so that um, I understand being on the other side. I was on the other side and strongly on the other side, okay? I was a big proponent of it. I want you to know that off the bat. I didn't come easily into the reformed camp. Um, I didn't come purposefully into the reformed camp. I came, I'm an evangelist, I came studying um, evangelism. I actually was called on to teach a, a young adult group one night and uh, I wanted to teach on evangelism, that's my passion. And I got good training from Calvary Chapel. My pastor taught me how to study the Bible and study in context. So I was gonna study Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 and teach Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, by grace we're saved. Of course, famous verses. Um, and what struck me is wanting to get good context, I started to read the beginning of Ephesians 2. And I've read the whole Bible, I've read Ephesians 2 before, but it was one of those moments when God moved sovereignly in his grace to open my eyes to a concept that I had previously heard a little bit about and had rejected and now was realizing, hmm, I need to dig this out. And that was, of course, Ephesians 2.1. When I read that, it said, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. And it hit me like a sledgehammer. What can dead men do? Uh, they can't do anything. And I, I just heard that somewhere. I had heard it before, but it was, it was a move of God. So I say this to say, I was on a journey. And, I, and God was bringing me to this place, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm reformed now. That's why I've embraced the doctrines of grace. I don't think I ever went through what was called the cage stage of Calvinism because I came to it um, later in my 30s, and I'd been in leadership at church, so maybe I had a little maturity. Um, I don't know, but I never was really railing at people over it, but uh, um, I was happy to discuss it. I was excited about it. But I did not want to make it the litmus test. And to this day, it is not a litmus test for fellowship with me. Any, if you're watching this that are my friends, you know. Uh, if you're here today, I have a great many friends that I do ministry with. In fact, I would say probably the majority of people I still do street ministry and evangelism with hold to what I would consider an Arminian slash free will view of soteriology. I, I believe they are saved brothers and sisters, and I love them dearly. I disagree, and I think it's an important issue. That's why I'm making these videos. That's why I'm talking about these things. But you just need to know that about me. I've come from that camp. I have. I love people in that camp. I don't hate people in that camp. I'm not calling into question the salvation of people in that camp. And I will stand as my Whitfield with your Wesley and call people to repentance. So just know that as you watch these other videos, you check these things out, just know that I am a man who, who understand a lot what you believe. I believe that if you're here today and you believe an Armenian uh, free will soteriology, I believe that I understand a lot of what you believe because I was there myself. And maybe God will move through these videos to draw you into a reformed understanding. I believe 
that like Calvinism, God sovereignly works. I believe there are Arminians and there are Calvinists because God is sovereignly in control. And uh, if he wanted all Christians to be Calvinists, we all would be. If he wanted everybody in the world to be Christians, we all would be. But God is working sovereignly to work out his will in this world. And he does it in many great and wonderful ways. And But it's all according to his purpose. It's all for his glory. And I'm thankful for that. So anyway, I just cleared the 10 minute mark. So I'm not going to ramble on. So I said it. I don't want to go much longer than those. So here's the first one, a little bit about me and why I'm getting into this. And I uh, hope you'll dive in and see, see what you like. See if you enjoy it. God bless you.